Hello. I've decided, in light of the fact I'm hot and grumpy because it is unreasonably hot today, that I'm going to have a moan and dispel some myths about the Citroen BX. It's not all of them. There are plenty more myths. There are other things people will say that you will think are wrong. And uh, this is just some of them. Where did I put my list? Ah. One, two, three, four, six. There are six. Myth number one. The Volvo Tundra. This was commonly believed until recently, but even I was going around telling people this was true. And it was the general belief that the BX was the design that Citroen picked up because Volvo had rejected it as the uh, proposal for their new 340 model. Turns out that's not the case. Marcello Gandini of uh, Bertoni, not to be confused with Firmino Bertoni, although that's spelt with an I, and Bertoni is spelt with an E, they're different. One Bertoni is a chap, the other one is a design house. And uh, anyway, Marcello Gandini, he of Lamborghini Countach and Lancia Stratos fame, among others, uh, he came up with some designs. And one of the designs he came up for was uh, for Volvo. It was called the Tundra. It was a concept car. But he also came up with a design for Citroen, the BX. Now, these cars bear more than a passing resemblance. But apparently, this is just by chance. You see, it's commonly believed that Volvo turned down the design for the Tundra and went with their own 340. And uh, Citroen picked up the uh, discarded design. Well, according to a new book I've read um, called uh, something to do with a BX, completely invades me what it's called now. I'll put a picture of it and there'll be a link in the description. A new family of Citroen or something like that. Anyway, um, it's very hot. Yeah, the, uh, the, the Tundra, as it turns out, was designed after the BX. The BX initially um, was submitted to Citroen because they'd requested some outside help, which they don't normally do. Normally all of Citroen's cars were designed in-house, but the BX, they were struggling. They wanted something new and fresh and, uh, you know, a little different to what they had before, but unmistakably still at Citroen. Um, and they were struggling. All their designers were coming up with cars that looked a bit like a CX or a GS still. And uh, they basically decided to go hunting around and they were approached by Tony and they put on uh, Signor Gandini. And yeah, he, he gave them a, a design proposal back. It was uh, one model with uh, two different sides, slightly different one to the other. Um, so there's two different variations on it. Submitted the design. Citroen said, yeah, that'll do. Thanks very much. Paid the man. He sent the designs off. Apparently never heard from him again. Well, that can't be completely true because he did start in a 16 valve advert in the late 90s about how does the Lamborghini designer get to the Lamborghini, presumably by whatever car he owns. You know, he could drive a BX if Citroen put one in front of him and asked him to drive it so they could film an advert. So yeah, he um, he submitted the design and that was in 77 and apparently the Tundra 78. When quizzed on this, he sort of said, oh yeah, no, a few people have said they look similar. And read into that what you will but so uh, yeah no one knows for sure Gandini did mention it in the book and he did say that he thought the uh the BX wouldn't rank in his top 10 favorite designs or did he say something meaner than that I can't remember it was pretty disheartening anyway but yeah so the Tundra does not predate the BX I know surprising apparently it doesn't predate the BX it's a common myth that it does but it doesn't. BX came before. It wasn't launched before, but it, the design was submitted before the design to Volvo. And the design to Volvo for the Tundra was only ever going to be a concept car anyway. So, fair enough. No. Negative. It wasn't a 1.9. The 1.9 litre engine did exist. There was a 1.9 litre diesel BX. Uh, 1905 cc um, and it was used uh, pretty much from the first diesels they made so sort of 80 late 84 early 85 right up until the last bx and the last bx off the line probably was a 1.9 diesel but it wasn't a turbo it was naturally aspirated or nasp as i think all the kids are saying now but citroen did do 
a turbo diesel BX. No, it wasn't. Yeah, okay, it might have been badged as one. Well, in fact, technically it wasn't badged because the badges just say Citroen BX. Oh, no, it's the wrong way around. Citroen BX. Why are they like that? This, that's, that's how they are. The car's not been rear-ended or something and put back together by a monkey. No, they were generally badge DTR turbo, TZD turbo, RD turbo, whatever. And the naturally aspirated versions of the smaller diesel engines, they were badge 17 RD, 17 TGD, etc. Um, if there's any interest in it, I'll do a video on BX models if you want to get really geeky about it. Yeah, they didn't. They did refer to them as the 17 TD in some literature, some brochures or some magazines or whatever. And they did kind of refer to it as a 17, but it wasn't. It's not a 1.7. Look at the CC. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's in anyone's money, that's 1.8. So it's a 1.8 TD. There was no 1.7 diesel or turbo diesel BX or a 1.9 TD BX. Uh, people have built 1.9 TD BXs. The engine there first appeared in, must be careful here, I'll get someone correcting me. I'm going to say the ZX. I think the ZX was the first Citroen to have the 1.9 TD engine, followed by the Xantia. Um, Peugeot, it would have been the 1.9 TD 405, which would have been the facelift 405, because the earlier 405 turbo diesel and the 309 turbo diesel and the 205 turbo diesel, which they made, and that's quite a cool thing, they were all badge 1.8. The Mark 1 405 was a 1.8. Um, Peugeot didn't mess about. Uh, yeah, so they said that, but the 1.9 appeared in the facelifted 405 and in the ZX and the Xantia onwards. Um, it never appeared in the BX. I say people have done it. There's a chap called Matt who, among other things, has a Rover V8 powered Hyundai <sighs> something from the 80s based on a Cortina, apparently. Um, but he also has a 1.9 litre TD BX estate, uh, which is quite cool. And um, yeah, that people have built them it's uh, that architecture um you know the family of engines is the same it's a very straightforward thing it's just a cc is different but um not a huge amount more power probably between two and four more horsepower and 12 pound feet of torque more maybe uh no, maybe 15 in fact book figures so yes they didn't do 1.9 td they didn't do a 1.7 td even if they say they did it's a 1.8 so now you can live your life Mark 1 BXs had a black C-pillar window. Kind of. Yes, they did. Some did. The models designated uh, TRS, DTR, which I'll get onto. Uh, DTR and the GT had the black plastic C-pillar window, which was present on one side of that model Gandini submitted. The very first prototype design that he did had that little black window in it, and that's carried over. But it wasn't just the Mark One that had it. The Mark II did as well. No one seems to pick up on this. And in fairness, it can be a little confusing. Uh, the, um, the models of the Mark II that carried it on were the 19 TRS and 16 TRS and the uh, eventually 19 TZS and TZI. They carried on with that black seat pillar window, but all the others got rid of it. Uh, why did they get rid of it? I imagine because it's pointless can't see how it just crazes and goes funny. It's kind of cool. So yeah, some Mark II BXs did have it. The diesel versions of this, that starts to get a little more complicated because you've got TRS, DTR, which is the diesel version of a TRS, and TZI, the TZD. The TZD, and TZS rather, TZD is diesel version, TZS. TZD did have it, I believe. God, now I'm, now I'm questioning myself. but the TZD Turbo didn't because the TZD Turbo had totally different seats, totally different wheel trims, a totally different look and totally different marketing. Even though it was still a TZD, it was a GTI with a turbo diesel engine, whereas 19 TZD was a TZS with a diesel engine. Except unless it was an estate. If it was an estate, the TZD Turbo was a TZD, which was a TZS with a diesel engine, but it was a TZD with a turbo diesel engine in an estate body. They didn't do an estate version of a GTI. Um, 
with a diesel engine in it. Uh, and they did do an estate version of a GTI called a 19 TRI, um, which had the same wheel trims as a GTI, and it had the same seats as a GTI, and generally was the same as a GTI, except it was an estate. But they don't do a diesel version. Well, they did do a bit of a diesel version of that. Did they? Does that count? Does the DTR turbo count? No! I don't know. Maybe. But yeah, I can't even remember what the myth was now. Oh, the windows. Yeah, some had, some didn't. <laughs> the battle cry of the turbo diesel owner. Uh, okay. Book figures. Yes. The BX16 valve has 133 pound foot of torque at 5,000 RPM, which kind of tells you all you need to know about the character of that engine. Whereas the turbo diesel, 134 at something diesel-y, two and a half, three, two, I don't know, something low. Because torque and power kind of are hand in hand, they're not separate entities, the fact you've got one engine with 160 horsepower and 133 pound foot, or an engine with 90 horsepower and 134, tells you about how the engine's behaving when that torque is delivered. So one will feel a lot faster than the other, even though it doesn't have as much torque by one pound foot. But it's not as simple as that either, because technically speaking, in terms of real world, a 16 valve does have more torque than the turbo diesel. The engine doesn't produce the peak figure as high as, as the turbo diesel, and I'm sure the torque band itself is probably narrower than it is on the turbo diesel. But, oh, a good old friend gearing. You see, a BX turbo diesel at the wheels is producing around about two, 240 pound foot at, uh, at its peak revs. Whereas the 16 valve is more like 330 ish, probably. Or was it 320? It was around that kind of figure. And the reason is the gearing obviously amplifies the torque output because the gearing is shorter because petrols can have shorter gears because they've got a longer rev band. They don't have to have tall gearing like diesels do because they only rev to 4000 or whatever. So technically speaking, a 16 valve does have more torque. A lot more. A hell of a lot more. And it's lighter. However, usable torque different story 16 valve probably not the one you want to use to be towing oh i don't know a trailer with a reliant fox on 1600 no it's on that side definitely not the one you want to be using i mean if you had a 16 valve when you were towing and you did a tractor pull and race the 16 valve would win but you would have to cane it absolutely cane it which means it, you'd kill it after a few goes whereas the diesel you wouldn't you just keep the revs kind of wherever it wants to be and it will just slog away hair in the tortoise i suppose so the uh, short story of that is the turbo diesel is better for towing. I think we knew that already, actually. Have you seen one of those BX16 valve 4x4 GTs? Oh, the BX4x4 16 valve was well fast. It's not because they didn't make one. They didn't do one. They didn't do a 4x4 16 valve. The only BX 16 valve you could get was a front wheel drive. Uh, they were called GTI 16 valve early on um, when they first came out in 1987. Uh, and that badging was dropped in about 88 and where it just became the 16 valve. They dropped the GTI bit and just had it as a separate car. So they had BX GTI and GTI 16 valve originally, just like Volkswagen did with the Golf. Or they had BX GTI and then BX 16 valve. From 88 onwards and then in 89 onwards they changed the look of the 16 valve and went from a phase one which looked like a gti 16 valve to a phase two which looked like no other bx well kind of like a sport from the front maybe the rear bumper as well wheels are quite similar no it looked like nothing else uh yeah the reason they didn't do a 16 valve 4x4 is quite frankly because the engine would have eaten the gearbox just like i would eat spaghetti carbonara uh quickly I mean, the transmission in the BX 4x4, which was a GTI, well, sorry, some of the 4x4s were GTI 8 valves. Um, it didn't really handle it with that, to be honest, and that's consequently why you don't get any turbo diesel BX uh, 4x4s, because they've got more torque. Than a... Yeah, you didn't get a 1.6 or a 1.4, because lol. Um, yeah, so basically, it was a 1.9 carburetor uh, model in some markets. Um, and with the estate in this country, you could get a BX 4x4, which 
just called BX 4x4. That was an estate and it was a 1.9 with carburetor. They may have done some single point injection models nearer the end. Um, and in this country, predominantly the more common one was the GTI 4x4. Um, they didn't do a 16 valve 4x4. Why did they do a GTI 4x4? I think it was a fashionable thing to do at the time. I think everyone was doing 4x4s when they Sierra Ford started off with the XR4. Everybody else jumped on the bandwagons. You had Cavalier 4x4s and you had 405 4x4s and I think there was a Renault. Was there a Renault 21 4x4? Cav uh, Cavalier, as I say, Mondeo 4x4. You know, they carried it on. Why? <laughs> Why? I mean, the, the only thing a BX 4x4 will do is be slower than a normal GTI because it's heavier. It'll break more than a normal GTI because it's delicate. It'll cost more than a normal GTI because you have to have custom parts made like exhausts and prop shafts and things like that. And it'll be harder to find one. Oh, and it'll be thirstier. Did I say it'll be slower? It would be slower. So yeah, I mean, they're a bit rarer and they've got a little skirt around the rear bumper to hide the diff casing from behind. So yeah, that's cool. No, BXs are not made of plastic. Now, I'm well aware there is a BX behind me and the only parts of it you can see are plastic. Fine, so is that. The window isn't, that's glass. But they're not made of plastic. In terms of percentage of the car that's made of plastic or percentage of the bodywork, I should say, that's made of plastic because 90% of a car is probably made of plastic these days all the interior components and trim clips and fittings and radiator end caps and all that sort of thing. But the, uh, the bits of a BX of the bodywork that are made of plastic aren't normally on most cars. The boot lid is plastic on the estate and on the hatchback. The bonnet is plastic on 90% of them. They did actually make cars with metal bonnets, but that was the very early diesels. Uh, and then I think they did that for noise insulation because they all sound like tractors. The metal bonnets didn't really get used and then on the very last BXs to be built, which I believe had all been farmed out to Houlier by that point, um, they all seemed to come with metal bonnets again. Most of the, the TX range, if it was a TXI or a TXD, um, yeah, for some reason they suddenly started popping up with metal bonnets again. I don't know why. Maybe they had some old pressings left or something. They thought we might as well use those. So on a normal BX, boot lid, bonnet, and the C pillar where that window is, one that I went on about just now, if you don't have the window, it's made of plastic, but it's just a skin, it's just a plastic skin stuck onto the metal framework. All BXs have the hole there for the window. It's just whether they've got a window in it or not. If it doesn't have a window, it's just got a small bit of plastic at the top and then the plastic window underneath it. That's it. The wings, the doors, the roof, the shell, the bulkhead, trust me, they're made of metal because they were. They're not too bad. That's a bit unfair. I think compared to most cars of the era, they're pretty good. I think B I think the difference with BX is, is they they fought a long time. They hung on a long time. So you could get Sierras and, and Cavaliers and, and uh, Golfs and whatever from the era driving around and, and with rust bubbles on after, you know, not long at all, really. And they had a reputation for rusting quickly. And BXs didn't. So that kind of maybe that fueled the whole they're made of plastic thing because you don't see rusty ones. But uh, they were, they were rusting. and it's just they fight, they fight, they fight. When they lose the fight, oh man, they lose the fight big time. All the rust is hidden. You very rarely have it on the outside. This is the rustiest BX I've seen on the outside. Just because it had been sat around in the, in the elements. But underneath it's not bad at all. It's pretty good, which is better really. Um, but uh, yeah, they tend to go underneath. So um, yeah, trust me, they're made of metal. I'll give you a bonus one then. Um, the uh, BX 19 or 16 and 19 uh, TRS. This will interconnect with another video on BX trim range for when you're really bored. In uh, this country, this is in French. This means uh, very plush sporty. Très riche sportif. Well, the sportif, yeah, this is really, really confusing. Okay, right, tray, very, riche, plush, kind of. I don't actually know what it means, but it's posh. 
um, even though you could get a model that was just called the RS, so it was just posh sporty, not very posh sporty. They couldn't say it was just more basic. It was like, no, it was, no, it's still posh, it's just not quite as posh. So if you've got TRS, you've got a very plush one with the sportier engine. If that was an E, it would be the lower power engine, which you couldn't get with a very. That only came with the plush. Yeah, so you could get a 16RE, or in France it was actually called a 15RE, because the E, meaning it's a lower power version of that engine, they downgraded it to 1500 for the... Uh, some sort of tax loophole or something, even though it was the same CC, but in the UK it was just called a 16RE. And of course you could get a 14RE, which was 1400 plus economy. So the smaller engine, lower power. Um, you could also get 14E, which wasn't plus at all. 14E is just 14 poverty. But you could also get diesels, and that's where things got confusing, because in France you had BX19, or 17, uh, and then you had um, RD instead of RS, um, or RE, I suppose. I mean, I don't know if they actually did a version which was equivalent of an RE, but basically they got rid of the S or the E, which de denoted which level of petrol engine it had, and replaced it with a D. So you had trim and then D for diesel. Fine. So you had 19RD or 19TRD, except you didn't. In France you did, and in all the countries that don't speak English you did. But in the UK you had 19RD or 19DTR, diesel, very posh. Why? Because TRD looks like turd. This is true. That's not a myth. That is true. In fact, it wasn't because of the BX. This had been noticed on the CX before the BX in the uh, in the early 80s, much earlier, you know, 81, maybe even the late 70s. They'd some wise uh, cracking dude had figured this and gone, ah, I see a problem with our new model range. Having thought out this complicated system of uh, designating which level of car you had, they got to the very end and realised that one of them. Uh, was um, basically proudly displaying on the back of the car that it was poo. So that's why you got BX19RD or DTR. Should be TRD. And if you go to France or Greece or Italy or Switzerland or Belgium or Holland or Germany or Austria or Poland or Brazil or Finland or Norway or Denmark or Australia. No. No, Australia is English speaking, but if you go to the ones that aren't, it'll be a 19 TRD, which makes a lot more sense, because that doesn't mean poo over there.